Hello. Today I want to show how we can improve of a common way of building workflows. So I have a basic workflow here that allows me to uh, give it an amount and a currency. It will then go to Google and it will look up what is that converted to euro and it will then give me back the result. I have a couple of defaults, so if I run this workflow now, I will actually see what uh, 200 Danish crowners is converted to euro. Um, what would normally happen is that I then have an Excel spreadsheet with a list of currency that I need to have converted. I have that here. So I have a currency, I have an amount, and here I want what is that converted to euro. So I can read the Excel spreadsheet, I can go through each row. I can call my workflows and map in the different uh, uh, arguments and get the result back. I can then update my data table and when I'm done, I write the result back to Excel. So if I do that now, it will run through the list and here is the result. Here are the different values converted to euro. Um, there's a bunch of problems with this workflow um, and and there are different ways we can fix that um, one thing that might be wrong is that imagine that there were 10,000 rows and at some point the robot breaks down there's a network outage you know whatever uh, one of the values doesn't exist whatever it might be and the, the, the workflow stops then when you run the workflow, it will go through all the items again. So we could fix that by adding a filter and say, only give me those that have a value in converted. And then I'm only processing the items that is missing something. But that's extra logic to our workflow. And you still have to do it manually. You still have to see that there was an error and then you have to do it. But if there's 10,000 rows, and let's imagine it was not just looking up something on a web page, it was actually doing a lot of processing and maybe it takes several minutes to do. And you need to speed that up. You also need the ability to easily distribute that load across multiple robots. Um, another common thing is that if something often fails, sometimes just trying one more time fixes that. Um, it could be an unresponsive application or a network outage, you know, the different things can make something break. And then if you just try it one more time, it works. We can also set that into system using work item queues. So let's look at how you might go through the process of converting this. So we start by creating a queue. So I created a queue called currency converter to, if I go in and look at that, you will see that it's attached to the project second project. If something fails, it retries three times. It doesn't add a delay when retrying or adding items. And whenever a new item is added, it notifies the project called uh, the workflow called currency lookup in the second project. And it does that on the robot running as my current user right now. So if I go to work items, I don't have any work items right now. Uh, there we go. I don't have any work items right now. Um, so if I if we rewrite the process Excel and instead of, of calling the workflow, we then add a work item. So we take all the values from the Excel spreadsheet and we add them as uh, parameters to add work item. So now the payload of that work item will contain the data for each of the rows inside the data table and we can now process that one at the time. Um, so just because this is a demo and example, the way that we do this is that we pop an item of the work item queue and inside work item, we now have a payload with the items that we want. So pop will take up the first item of the queue that is ready to be processed. So it has to be in state new and it has to have a next run that is in the past. So we can add items to the queue that we don't want processed until a certain date or time, if, if that is what we want. Um, if there's nothing left in the queue to work on, this will return nothing or null. So we start by checking, did we actually get something? And if we get something, we do the thing that we did before. 
And just for the example's sake, I'm opening the Excel spreadsheet and adding the value that I got. Um, and then once we're done, we update the work item to successful. So if we go back, it is reset and run process Excel, we can now go inside here and see that we now have the different items added inside uh, the queue as work items that need to be processed. Um, if we reload here a couple of times, we can also see that it's slowly processing each of the different items because as long as they're unprocessed items, OpenFlow will randomly poke the one that needs to do something and start processing these items. So now it's done. And if we go over, we can see the values inside our Excel spreadsheet. But this is not really efficient. Um, we haven't fixed the problem with error handling and it's also a little slow because, you know, we're only doing one at the time. So a better way of doing this is create a flow that calls the processing flow. So we have a main flow that is responsible for popping items off the queue. Um, so here we are popping an item of the queue. If we got an item, we then go in and we run the processing workflow. And if that is successful, we then end up down here and we mark the item as successful. But if there was an exception, if there was an error of some kind, we can update the work item to retry uh, and then OpenFlow will decide if it makes sense to retry or if we hit our mix limit or if it's a business uh, business rule exception, it will not retry it. You know, all that logic is handled by OpenFlow. So all we have to do is basically say there was an error, attach the error and retry it and OpenFlow will do its thing. This makes it a lot more clean and easy to do. Um, so the other thing we can do is that when you need to add items to the work item queue, if it's 10 or 100, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to add a lot of items, it might not be efficient adding them one at the time. So with bulk add, you can actually add multiple items in one go inside the message queue. So now our loading workflow becomes even more simple. So we just read a data table, we give that data table to bulk add and tell it to add them to the right queue. Good, I checked this. Um, and, and now we can start processing that. So let's try that. So we process Excel. And as you can see, it now starts processing all the different items. And if we go into Excel, here are now our converted values. Uh, let's put that back to zero and let's go over to OpenFlow. And you can see here are the items that was added. Let's clean this up. There we go. So process Excel, we get the items. It starts processing them. And as you can see, it actually processes these items a lot faster now. And if we go to Excel, here is our converted values. But imagine that one of these values were wrong. Um, let's say that the amount was supposed to be 20. So right now the value is nearly 12. Um, if we run a rerun this, we can actually go in to the payload and we can change the amount to 20. And we can now resubmit this item to be reprocessed. So we just basically took one of the items, resubmitted to the queue, and it will run one more time with the updated data. And now you can see that the value is not nearly 12, it's nearly 24. So it doubled because we doubled the amount. So this is an easy way to go in and fix small issues either in a workflow or in the data that the workflow is working with and then only reprocessing that specific item. That makes things a lot more efficient. Um, next, I will be covering how we can now start low balancing this out across multiple robots and speed up the processing of the items.